I want to jump to um, meme coin futures. <laughs> Doge, of course, has been, you know, that's, <laughs> it's right. always on the tips of everybody's uh, tongues, I think, especially when you look at, at people like uh, Elon and, and the extent of that. But how, what are your thoughts on how meme coins can hold on during a bear market? Do you think that's going to be one of those things that people kind of say, well, you know, not really interested in it during a bear market? What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think, uh, you know, by its very nature, meme, I think, kind of maybe answers that question for us, right? Um, if it is a meme, after all, then there's there's obviously memes driving it. So it's a Reddit forum, it's social right. media, it's an Elon Musk tweet. So one can never really say, you know, something could start because somebody at an NBA basketball game stood up and took a shirt off and had like a marker scribbled on his chest. And that's going to be the new coin that everyone's jumping on to buy. And for, for sure. a few days, everyone rides this thing up before it's crashed. To me, I always want to know like, well, what is the value of this particular project? You know, what value is underneath? So I, I guess in so many ways, I'm a value investor. Like what is the value of Shiba coin, you know, or Doge coin? Um, you know, Doge, I'm just looking at price charts right now, you know, the price trends were at fall about 29 cents. It's been about 32 cents. It's just been hovering there. Could it be thriving, you know, moving towards a new high? Could it go past its, you know, it's 70 cents high right. on its way to a dollar? I, I don't know. I don't, you know, and I, I think, but I think just if momentum gets back online and it starts to surge again and you get a lot of support from institutional investors and you get a lot of support from, from companies that are willing to accept it as payment. I mean, we literally mm -hmm. saw a car company this afternoon, Damox Spiritus, now uh, accepting Dogecoin for payment of their new electric car, which by the way, when it's parked and plugged in, will actually mine Doge, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. so it really just comes down to how much value we give anything, right? I mean, right, gold, why is it valuable? Because humans deemed it valuable. So Dogecoin, mm -hmm. Could it be, it's one of the more, you know, it certainly has more cachet than some of these other coins, but some of these new ones that are coming online are just, I feel like they're a joke. And maybe I'll, hey, maybe everyone will be laughing at me when everyone owns Dogecoin someday. <laughs> but I'm willing to sit that one out, you know? Well, you look at Coinbase. I mean, Coinbase is, I would consider one of the most difficult platforms to get a coin on, you know, registered and actually tradable. Right. And Coinbase, of course, is going to make it live. You had Elon coming out with the festival idea mm -hmm. uh, here, here recently, just right. here the week before Bitcoin 21 in, in Miami. With those kinds of factors, and then whether it's Elon or Mark Cuban or Coinbase, that seems like a lot of potential rolling momentum coming at Doge in the near future. Do you feel like it's going to cause it to maybe cause a surge? You know, I, I'm... I'm, I think, yes, I think we're going to see, I think Doge right now is underpriced. I'm saying that I, yeah. you know, I own Doge. I, I really do, but I, you know, I'm not, I'm not putting more money into Doge right now. I'm, I'm sure. it's been hovering there. I'm waiting for it to have a nice breakout. I, I just don't think it's going anywhere at this moment. I don't think it's going away and I don't think it's skyrocketing and it's been hovering at this plot, this spot. Everyone's watching what's happening with Bitcoin and some of these big DeFi projects right now. Yeah. And I think that to me is where, even as you're getting some of, even if those people like that are on the Reddit forums who are part of the Doge army are just sort of sitting there waiting on Dogecoin sitting at 32 cents, they get bored. People get bored with it just hovering at 32 cents, 31 cents. It's not doing anything for anyone. So they're going to move in. And I think you're seeing some of this money now moving into some of these other DeFi projects that actually have a stronger store of value. So mm. yeah, I think Doge could explode. Um, I think it has a buy signal to it right now on Doge. Um, I'm not putting any more money into it at the moment. I'm going to wait to see where it goes, though. Yeah. Has there been platforms that you found that work better for some of these uh, fringe, you mm -hmm. know, crypto assets that you like? Hmm, this this seems to work we well on being able to acquire. I know Doge was, you know, it's on a few traded platforms now. You, you know, me for me, it was Voyager that introduced me and got me onto Doge, but there's others out there. What what seems to work for you? You know, I love KuCoin. Um, KuCoin, which is, for those of you who might not know, K-U-Coin, C-O-I-N, KuCoin. Um, you know, it's uh, it's not based in the U.S., so you need a VPN if you're going to go that direction on it. Um, but it has a lot of the smaller cap coins on there. Like, there was a coin that I bought into yesterday, and it's only available on KuCoin that I could get, and it was uh, MTV. 
uh, coin, MTV, with a lot of upside. And so I'm glad I got into that one. Polka decks, you know, is available on KuCoin. You can't get it other places. But you can you, actually, they just rolled out a new one, but it wasn't a big one. Um, and uh, and I also use Binance as well and, and Bybit. Right. But for, for smaller cap stuff, it's definitely KuCoin for me because I can get a lot of the smaller cap coins on there. Last question on this topic, and that mm -hmm. is when you, you look at where the SEC is right now with Ripple, kind of this evolution, also the most recent filings they had on the influencers that helped kind of promote the um, uh, the BitConnect scheme mm -hmm. that was out there. Do you see more legislation and or regulation starting to play into this, especially on these meme coins concerned? I'm, I look at it from a, a standpoint of where it's even maybe going into the influencers that are talking about it, like what the SEC has done with BitConnect. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think from a regulation standpoint, yes, absolutely. And I think, you know, I kind of echo, uh, far be it for me to, to, to go against or think, uh, go against what Michael Saylor has to think about this. But I, I really, I think he's right on this point, which is that the more regulation, the better for crypto. Mm -hmm. um, right. And it just, it solidifies it. You know, once we have... Once we have the Fed saying here, you know, this type of tax structure, it's it's considered property. It's not this. It's you know, once we have those guidelines in place, it's it only solidifies, and, and to me, it makes it stronger. Uh, I think there's yeah. there was a lot of fear in the beginning. Oh no, the government's going to crack down on it. It's going to eliminate it. I sure. mean, you even had just yesterday, right? The R RBI um, uh, come out in India and saying. Um, you know, hey, no, we 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 are allowing crypto. Like, please stop using that fud. Please stop making. You know, we're you cannot use that statement anymore. We are not disallowing banks to be able to uh, be involved in cryptocurrency trades. So, um, I think once you get these big institutions that are are standing by it and they're they're going to regulate it, they're going to want to make money off of it, um, just like cannabis in the United States. I mean. Mm -hmm. Yep. United States, come on, you know, when are you going to get your act together? You know, Canada's reaping the benefits of, of uh, legalized marijuana. So cannabis and uh, the amount of money that the government can make off that they're not going to miss their opportunity to make some good tax money off of this stuff. Yeah, for sure. Well, I think that's, you know, with, with regulation, you're right. I think it does help kind of uh, get a structure around it. Also, it kind of guides the tool sets out there for the rules of engagement when, whether you're an influencer or you're a marketing company or whatever you might be in terms of how you're launching a token or any of those kind of scenarios where some of these things like the BitConnect, you know, um, debacle doesn't ever occur again. Because I can understand with the SEC, they're just obviously trying to protect private investors. And that's the key with anything like that is, right. is the more we see, you know, regulation, which is good. I think this is a good thing that's potentially coming. I hear a lot in our comments about regulation and the concern for it. I, I would have to agree with Saylor on this is that I think this is definitely, you know, if anything, it's going to legitimize it and get it away from that edge, you know, that edge investment that a lot of people still consider it. Very small people that I talk to still consider Bitcoin an edge investment. Right. Which, you know. Yeah, I think you're right. And I think once, you know, you have all these big banks, you have Goldman Sachs, you have all these others that are, mm -hmm. you know, they're now hiring people like crazy to be able to handle phone calls about crypto. Right. And, yeah. and so yeah. it's that momentum is there. Now it's just a matter of the laws catching up.